Hey everyone, real quick, I want to talk about Chilling, the awesome scary stories app I'm partnered with. In case you haven't heard, every week I have new stories released over on Chilling. There's now over 1,000 stories on Chilling, with a bunch of other YouTube narrators and professionals to choose from. On Chilling, you can do the things that you'll never be able to do on YouTube. Choose from over 1,000 individual stories that are sorted into curated playlists, or you can create your own. On Chilling, we give you so much flexibility to listen the way you want. This includes a chilling, game-changing feature, our ambient menu. You can change the background sounds of the story at any time to fit your mood. Go from rain to a campfire with the press of a button. It's totally revolutionary. You need to try it. There have been a number of awesome updates to chilling, such as the ability to download stories for offline listening and the new social feature. You can now discuss your favorite stories with other users and friends. We're just getting started. Not only are we adding hours of new content every week, but original video content is also in the works. Chilling is evolving into a must-have for all horror lovers. Please go start your free trial over on Chilling and check out my personal playlist there. Click the link in the description to download and check it out. There's also currently a giveaway for an Xbox Series X bundle. I'll post a link in the description to enter. Last summer, I was traveling with my wife. We were going home from a wedding we attended about four states away from where we lived. The drive was too long to make it one day, so we would have to stay in a hotel for one night. On the way there, we stayed in a pretty decent hotel, roughly halfway. We were hoping to stay there on the way back as well, but when we looked, the prices were much higher and it had a lot less availability. I figured it wasn't a big deal and there would be plenty of other nice hotels we could stay at on the way back. My wife and I took turns driving on the way back. I drove for a while and then let my wife drive the next few hours. Then I returned to driving that night. At about 10 p.m., I started to get really sleepy. I looked over and saw that my wife was already fast asleep. I wasn't quite sure exactly where we were, so I pulled off the highway at the next exit to stop and look. I went into a gas station and filled up my tank. When I was done, I got on my phone and searched hotels near me. The search came up with about three of them that seemed to be in the area, and there wasn't very many in the surrounding area. I clicked on the first one I saw, and the rates were pretty cheap. I then looked at the other two. Unfortunately, none of them seemed all that nice, but it was late, and I really just wanted a place to sleep because I was getting more and more tired. I chose one and drove to it, which was only about five minutes away. When we arrived, my wife woke up. I asked her if this place looked all right to stay for the night, and she said yes, it seemed good enough. The place had an upper and lower level of rooms, and they all opened right up to the outside parking lot. There didn't seem to be many people there, because there wasn't very many cars in the parking lot. However, based on some of the older, rusty cars around the parking lot, I could tell it wasn't the nicest place in town. I got outside and went into the office. I got a room, and then went back to our car, grabbed my suitcase, and then my wife and I went to our room, which was on the ground level. Once we got into the room, we weren't all too impressed even after our expectations had been set low. The TV was still a box version, and the bathroom mirror had several noticeable smears on it. We were too tired to care though, and got to bed and fell asleep rather quickly. However, we were woken up not too long after that. I heard loud bangs coming from the door of our hotel. Our blinds were shut, so I couldn't see who was there when I woke up. I looked at the clock, and it was 2 a.m. Who could this be? I got up out of bed slowly, knocks continued. I got to the door and was going to open it, but decided to check the people instead. There were two large men standing outside the door. They both wore black jackets and did not look very friendly at all. They seemed to be angry for some reason. I watched the guy bang loudly on the door just inches from where my eyes were looking at him on the other side. I did not want to open the door for him. I had a bad feeling about this. As they kept knocking, I was wondering what I should do. I kept looking out the people and saw the other man who was standing at the door walk over towards the window. He then started knocking on the window. This continued for several minutes before finally it stopped. I watched the men seemingly walk away down the sidewalk in front of the hotel. My wife asked me what that was all about. I told her that I had no idea. At this point, I decided to go outside and look around. I opened the door and looked. I didn't see anyone or anything, but I really didn't feel like going out any further. I didn't feel safe. I went back inside and decided to just go back to sleep. It took a while, 
but eventually we were able to. When we woke up the next morning, we were pretty much ready to leave right away. The hotel didn't have breakfast or anything like that, and we hadn't brought much inside. I showered, got dressed, and then we left. It was about 7 a.m. when we left the hotel room and brought our things out to the car. When we got to our car and were getting inside, I noticed another car parked against the back side of the parking lot facing us. I saw the two guys I had seen in the people the previous night. They were sitting in the front two seats of the car, and I recognized them as the ones who had been knocking on our door. I pointed them out to my wife. She was confused at first until I explained to her those were the men that were knocking. As I was putting my suitcase in the trunk of our car, I saw the doors to the car that the men were in open up, and they began to walk towards us. We hurried to get inside the car, and as soon as I was able to, I started the engine. The men were parked pretty far away, so they were only about halfway to us by the time I started to drive away. We left and didn't look back. Luckily, we weren't followed or anything like that. To this day, I'm not sure what those men wanted or why they were watching us. This story takes place about five years ago when I used to work at a hotel near where I live. It's sort of a smaller hotel, and I was able to get the job because my parents are good friends with the owners. What I did was pretty much work behind the front desk and help people check in and check out. Of course, I did some other things too, but that was my main job. When I first got the job, I was working overnights, which were generally pretty quiet, especially in the middle of the night, and I had some free time. I didn't really like working in the middle of the night, but I did like that it was usually really easy. There would rarely be people checking in or needing anything from me super late at night. One night, I was working and it was about 1am. It was really quiet and it had been for quite some time. I heard the front door to the hotel open and shut and looked behind the front desk to see who was coming in. I saw a man walking in and he was walking towards me at the front desk. When he arrived, I said hi to him and he told me he was interested in getting a room. I started saying what I always say to people checking in, and the man's phone started to ring. He suddenly put his hand up and told me sorry, but he had to take the call. He then walked past me towards the hallway where the rooms were and disappeared. I heard him talking on the phone as he seemingly walked down the hallway. I remained at my desk waiting for the man to return and didn't think too much of it, but several minutes went by and he didn't come back. I also didn't hear anything more of the man. I didn't hear him talking or walking around nearby. I turned and looked to the monitors we had behind the front desk that I could watch. They basically had every hallway in the hotel under surveillance. I scanned around them, and I wasn't seeing the man at all. Then, I noticed one of the cameras seemed to be out of order. On one of the floor-level hallways, the camera had gone completely black. I thought this was strange, especially since the man had gone down in that direction. I decided to leave my front desk and see what was going on down there. The place was completely silent and I couldn't hear anything. I walked out and went around the corner to go down the hallway where the man had gone. It was a hallway where we had some vending machines and a couple of meeting rooms, but no guest rooms. That led to an area where we had stairs, an exit, and other hallways going to the left with guest rooms. As I looked down the long hallway, I didn't see anything at first, but as I slowly walked down, I heard some noise. I kept walking closer to it, and once I reached about halfway down the end of the hall, noticed the door to the stairs and exit of the building open up. I froze where I was and watched two men dressed in all black with ski masks included walk out and down the hall where the guest rooms were. One of the men looked over at me and immediately noticed me. The other guy did as well. I was halfway down the hallway and had nowhere to hide. All I could do was turn to go back to my front desk. When I did, I saw one of the men start to run after me. I sprinted back to the desk. The front desk was in a sort of enclosed area for our own safety, and I knew if I could make it back there, I'd be a lot safer. Once I got back, I closed the door and locked it, then called for the police. The man arrived and tried opening the door to the area that I was in. He then went towards the front of the desk. I ducked down under it as far as I could to be out of sight in case he had a weapon or something. I heard a few bangs on the window, and then a few bangs on the door. After that, it was silent for a while. I waited there, hoping that the police would arrive soon. After it was silent for several minutes, I stood back up and looked at the security cameras. There was one that was still all black, but now another one was as well. I looked around from behind the desk and didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything either. Less than a minute later, the police
police arrived at the hotel and walked in the front door. I told them what was going on, and they ended up searching the entire building. Unfortunately, the men that had been there were gone. After looking at the security tapes and examining the hotel, it was determined that the guy who had walked in the hotel and received the phone call had walked down the hall and left out the exit of the stairwell, letting the masked men into the hotel and covering the camera with black tape in the process. I think all the men had planned the job to rob one of our guests at the hotel or something. Either way, it gives me the creeps to think about. Last year, when I was on my way home traveling back from California, I stayed at several hotels. The second one I stayed at was a Holiday Inn. It was my last night on the road for my trip, and I was going to be getting back the next day. I was traveling by myself and had booked the hotel earlier that day. I arrived at about 9 p.m. and got all checked in. When I got there, the place seemed pretty average, not too busy and not too quiet either. I had a room on the second floor and walked down the hall and up the stairs. I was tired from a long day of driving, but not too sleepy yet. I got into my room, and the first thing I did was take a shower, change, then turn on the TV. I was getting really relaxed, having a snack and watching TV as I was on the bed. Maybe about an hour or an hour and a half of this went by, and as I stared at the TV, I thought I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Next to the front door, just barely in my vision, was a small coat closet. It appeared to slowly open up. My eyes darted over to it and I looked. What I saw was the door open about two inches and a hand sticking out. The door then closed back up. I was shocked. I stared at the door for several minutes straight wondering if I had really seen that. Then the door opened up again. This time it opened wider. I saw a man inside the closet staring right at me. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't leave the room because he was standing right in front of the doorway. He stepped out from the closet and slowly took several steps toward me. I panicked, not knowing what to do, and started screaming and calling for help as loud as I could. It was the loudest I had ever been in my life. The man stopped where he was. After a few moments, he turned and ran to the door and then left. After the man was gone, I ran over to the door and locked it. I then ran back to my phone and called the front desk. I told them what was going on. When I did, Someone who worked at the hotel came to my room and I showed them what had happened. They ended up calling the police and after a long time of talking with police and hotel employees, I finally felt safe enough to sleep in my hotel room. The man, however, was gone. It's crazy to me how he had been hiding in my coat closet the whole time I was in there. I'll never forget seeing him when the door opened.